Part 6, Motivation and Reward. Have you ever wondered what motivates us to act and make decisions? What drives us to pursue certain goals and desires? In this section, we will explore the science of motivation and reward, and how they shape our behavior and decision making. Motivation Motivation is a complex psychological process that initiates, guides, and maintains goal-oriented behaviors. It is what causes us to act, whether it is getting out of bed in the morning, going to work, or pursuing our dreams. There are many different theories of motivation, but most agree that it is influenced by a combination of internal and external factors. Internal factors, such as our values, goals, and personality, are often referred to as intrinsic motivation. External factors, such as rewards, punishments, and social pressure, are often referred to as extrinsic motivation. There are many theories of motivation, each focusing on different factors that drive our behavior. One popular theory is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which suggests that our basic physiological and safety needs must be met before we can pursue higher level needs, such as self-esteem and self-actualization. Maslow's hierarchy of needs Maslow's hierarchy of needs is a well-known theory of motivation developed by Abraham Maslow in the mid-20th century. According to this theory, human needs are arranged in a hierarchical order, with basic physiological and safety needs at the bottom, followed by needs for love and belonging, esteem, and self-actualization at the top. Physiological needs are the most basic needs, and include things like food, water, shelter, and sleep. These needs are the most important, and if they are not met, people will not be able to focus on anything else. Safety needs include things like security, stability, and order. These needs are important for people to feel safe and secure, and to be able to plan for the future. Love and belonging needs include things like friendship, intimacy, and a sense of belonging. These needs are important for people to feel connected to others and to feel loved and accepted. Esteem needs include things like self-respect, confidence, and achievement. These needs are important for people to feel good about themselves and to feel like they are valued by others. Self-actualization needs are the highest level of needs, and include things like self-fulfillment, personal growth, and creativity. These needs are important for people to reach their full potential and to live a meaningful life. The theory proposes that people are motivated to satisfy their needs in a sequence, with lower level needs taking priority over higher level needs. For example, a person who is hungry and thirsty will prioritize finding food and water over pursuing self-actualization. Once a lower level need is met, the individual is motivated to satisfy the next level of needs. For example, after satisfying their physiological and safety needs, a person may be motivated to seek out social relationships to fulfill their need for love and belonging. The highest level of needs in Maslow's hierarchy is self-actualization, which refers to the desire to reach one's full potential and achieve personal growth. According to Maslow, only a small percentage of people ever reach this level of need satisfaction, as it requires a high degree of personal insight, creativity, and a willingness to take risks. While Maslow's hierarchy of needs has been influential in shaping our understanding of motivation, it has been subject to criticism and revision over the years. For example, some scholars argue that the hierarchy is too rigid and does not accurately reflect the complexity of human needs. Others suggest that the hierarchy is culturally biased and may not be applicable to all individuals and societies. Despite these criticisms, Maslow's hierarchy of needs remains a popular and influential theory of motivation. It has been used in a wide range of contexts, from education and business to healthcare and personal development. By understanding the hierarchy of needs and the factors that drive our behavior, we can better understand our own motivations and work towards achieving our goals and fulfilling our potential. Another influential theory is self-determination theory, SDT, which suggests that people are motivated by their innate psychological needs for autonomy, competence, and relatedness. According to SDT, when these needs are met, people are more likely to engage in activities that are personally meaningful and fulfilling. Self-determination theory, SDT. Self-determination theory, SDT, is a macro theory of human motivation and personality that concerns people's innate growth tendencies and innate psychological needs. It pertains to the motivation behind people's choices in the absence of external influences and distractions. SDT focuses on the degree to which human behavior is self-motivated and self-determined. In the 1970s, research on SDT evolved from studies comparing intrinsic and extrinsic motives, and from growing understanding of the dominant role that intrinsic motivation played in individual behavior. 
It was not until the mid-1980s, when Edward L. Desi and Richard M. Ryan, two leading researchers in the field of motivation, developed SDT as a comprehensive theory of human motivation. SDT is based on the following three psychological needs. 1. Autonomy refers to the need for people to feel like they have control over their own lives and that they are not being controlled by others. 2. Competence refers to the need for people to feel capable and effective in their endeavors. 3. Relatedness refers to the need for people to feel connected to others and to feel like they belong. SDT proposes that when these needs are met, people are more likely to be intrinsically motivated, which means that they are motivated by their own interest and enjoyment in the activity, rather than by external rewards or punishments. Intrinsically motivated people are more likely to be engaged in their activities, to persist in the face of challenges, and to experience positive emotions such as enjoyment, satisfaction, and pride. SDT has been applied to a wide range of areas, including education, work, and healthcare. It has been shown to be an effective way to motivate people to learn, to perform well at work, and to adhere to medical treatment. Here are some tips for meeting people's psychological needs. 1. Give people choices. 1. One way to support people's autonomy is to give them choices about what they do, how they do it, and when they do it. 1. For example, you could ask people what they want to learn about in class, or you could give them a choice of projects to work on. 2. Provide feedback. 2. People need to know how they are doing in order to feel competent. 2. Providing feedback can help people to improve their performance and to feel good about themselves. 2. For example, you could give people feedback on their work, or you could offer them encouragement and support. 3. Build relationships. 3. People need to feel connected to others in order to feel relatedness. 3. Building relationships with people can help them to feel supported, valued, and accepted. 3. For example, you could get to know people's interests and hobbies, or you could simply take the time to listen to them. By meeting people's psychological needs, you can help them to be more motivated, engaged, and successful. Reward. A reward is something that is given to someone in recognition of their good behavior or achievement. Rewards can be tangible, such as money, prizes, or gifts, or they can be intangible, such as praise, recognition, or a sense of accomplishment. Rewards can be used to motivate people to behave in a certain way or to achieve a certain goal. They can also be used to reinforce desired behaviors and to discourage undesirable behaviors. The Science of Motivation and Reward The science of motivation and reward is a complex and ever-evolving field. Researchers are still learning about the neural and psychological mechanisms that underlie motivation, and about how to best use rewards to motivate people. However, there is some basic knowledge about motivation and reward that can be applied in a variety of settings. For example, we know that 1. People are more likely to be motivated by rewards that they value. 2. Rewards that are given immediately after a desired behavior are more effective than rewards that are given later. 3. Rewards that are unpredictable are more effective than rewards that are predictable. 4. Rewards that are given for incremental progress towards a goal are more effective than rewards that are given only when the goal is achieved. Using motivation and reward to achieve your goals. If you want to use motivation and reward to achieve your goals, there are a few things you can do. 1. Set clear and specific goals. 1. The more specific your goals are, the easier it will be to stay motivated. 2. Break down your goals into smaller steps. 2. This will make them seem less daunting and more achievable. 3. Find rewards that you value. 3. This will make them more motivating. 4. Reward yourself for your progress. 4. This will help you stay on track and motivated. 5. Don't give up. 5. There will be times when you feel discouraged, but don't give up on your goals. 5. Keep working towards them, and eventually you will succeed. Motivation and reward are powerful tools that can help you achieve your goals. By understanding how they work and using them effectively, you can increase your chances of success. So whether you are a student, a healthcare provider, or a business owner, understanding the science of motivation and reward is essential for achieving success and well-being. So take a moment to reflect on your own sources of motivation and the rewards that drive your behavior. And remember, with the right understanding and approach, motivation and reward can be powerful tools for achieving our goals and improving our lives.